My wife and I took a tour through Morocco and Egypt to celebrate our 20th wedding anniversary. This video will focus on the stops we made in the Egypt segment of the tour. We will also discuss our experience with the tour operator, Exotica. Being a history buff, I was blown away by all the temples and ancient sites. It's impossible to share all the amazing things we saw and experienced and keep this anywhere close to five minutes. Detailed information on each of the stops can be viewed in the 360 companion videos whose links can be found in the description in this video below. Our tour started and ended in Cairo. I'll be honest, I was really skeptical of what we would experience because of the low price of the trip. It was definitely worth it and something I recommend. I only have three complaints about the trip, which we will get out of the way first. The first thing was that there was a lack of communication about our flights and details like what ship we would be on for the Nile cruise portion. We literally did not get flight information until the day before and did not know what boat until we boarded it. Everything worked out fine and was relatively smooth, but you really have to trust the process. Second, in a couple instances, they did not leave enough time to actually sleep. We found out at 11 p.m. when we landed in Cairo, our next flight would be at 7 a.m. the next day with a meeting time of 5 a.m. in the lobby. This travel agent needs his beauty sleep and was not a happy camper. Third, we had too many different guides at times. While they were amazing across the board, you constantly felt like you were tipping people, mainly in Cairo. In some cases, you would be handed from one person to another three to four times in an hour. The rest was amazing. The service was incredible from the time we landed until the time we left. They even met us at our gate at the airport and led us through customs. We always had someone there to help us. Let's walk through the journey. The first day we flew to Luxor and checked into our home for the next four days on the riverboat Emerald. We met our amazing guide Tony, who was so knowledgeable. He taught us about culture, history, and even broke down the meaning of our names and wrote them out for us in hieroglyphics. Such an incredible person and guide. We were thrilled he was with us for the entire cruise portion of the trip. Here's what we saw. Our first stop is Luxor. Wow, one of those sites you have definitely seen in movies. We toured two main complexes here, the Temple of Karnak with famous columns and more ancient buildings. Beware though, people, including security guards, will offer to take your picture and then expect a tip before giving you back your camera. We also saw the Temple of Luxor. Along the way, there are multiple optional excursions you can sign up for. We did the night show at Karnak. It was pretty cool and ended with a narrated light show. Definitely worth the extra money. The next day, we started with a visit to the Valley of the Kings. I think this may have been extra, but definitely worth it. We definitely paid extra to go into a couple of additional tombs. The tombs we paid extra for were worth it as they typically had more ornate designs. We even got to see the famous tomb of King Tutankhamun. Absolutely incredible. After the Valley of the Kings, we visited the temple of Queen Hatshepsut and then stopped at the Colossi of Memnon to see two huge statues of the Pharaoh Amenhotep III. We then sailed to Edfu and took the most amazing buggy ride to the Temple of Horus. The buggy ride was worth the stop alone. My wife was not thrilled when I asked to sit up front so I could get good video. Yes, I'll face great danger to bring you good footage. The temple was great with tons of hieroglyphics. The vendors outside of the temple can be persistent and aggressive. Don't take anything from them. Even a business card could be an implied promise to purchase something. After Edfu, we went to Kam Ombo to see the twin temples of Heroiris and Sobek, and also see the Nilometer, which measured river levels. After that, we checked out the Crocodile Museum, where you can see the mummified remains of, you guessed it, crocodiles. In between locations, we enjoyed sailing the River Nile, which is also very romantic and amazing. At different spots, like when you go through locks, Egyptians will come alongside the riverboat in small vessels they are literally rowing and tie up to the ship. They will then throw goods like clothing, blankets, tablecloths, etc. up to passengers who can inspect them. If they like them, they throw money back. If not, they throw back the item. So fun to watch. The next day is a long one, but worth it. 
We started at 3.30 a.m. to see Abu Simbel. It's incredible, especially when you find out it was actually moved and raised up so it would not be destroyed when they created a reservoir. On the way back, you stop at a granite quarry and see an unfinished obelisk. We did an optional tour in the afternoon to take a traditional Felucca boat and see a Nubian village. Along the way, we stopped to swim in the Nile River. It also included a stop at a lovely lady's house for tea, snacks, and crocodiles. You can actually hold a baby crocodile before going up on the rooftop to watch the sunset. Notice they show you the crocodiles after you swim in the river. Hmm. There's also a small town where you can do some souvenir shopping between dodging camels. All this would have been plenty for an incredible trip, but there's more. The following day, you fly back to Cairo. We signed up for the Saladin Citadel excursion that included visiting the Coptic Christian neighborhood. This may have been my favorite part of the trip. We were able to visit churches that contained water from the same source the Holy Family drank from while they fled to Egypt. You can even visit a church built over a room that it is said the Holy Family stayed in. Wow. After that, we went to the Egyptian Museum, which is just mind-boggling with the amount of mummies and ancient Egyptian relics and art. I have to stop and give a shout out to our phenomenal guide, Haitham Hafiz. Talk about knowledgeable. He goes on digs and teaches hieroglyphics. He calls all the people he likes Habibi, a term of endearment. You should request him if you can. The next and final day put an exclamation point on the trip with a visit to the Great Pyramid. We paid extra to climb up to the burial chamber. This is not for anyone claustrophobic or lacking in cardio health. The passage is very tight at times with two-way traffic and is extremely hot and humid as there's no air circulation. Totally worth it though. After that, we went to see the Sphinx. For the record, I'm convinced the ancient Egyptians had help from aliens. This is a trip that I absolutely want to do again, but bring my kids along this time. I can't believe how affordable it is and the value we got for the money. I only wish it was longer. If you would like to see more, check out our 360 companion video tours of the sites we visited. Better yet, reach out and take advantage of our complimentary trip planning. Our suppliers like Exotica match their online pricing for us and it helps support this channel. Thanks for checking out this episode of 5 Minute Review. Did you know that we don't charge our customers planning fees? And in fact, in many instances, we get our customers better deals than they can get going direct. So if you're ready to travel and you're not already working with a travel professional, consider giving our team an opportunity to help you plan your next great adventure. And if you're enjoying our videos, please give us a like below. Or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you can stay up with all the latest and greatest content. Until we see you again, travel and be well.